Okay, now that we've discussed how we get access in general, how the RT Web Parts application in general gets access to Pi, let's talk about the specifics of how individual users can either be granted or disallowed access to individual Pi tags uh, or Pi modules in the module database. Now, this is handled through a mechanism that is stored with the Pi server with each of the objects that we're talking about, either points, uh, their definitions, or, or the data in a point, or the modules in a module database. Uh, each of these objects can be associated with an owner, a group, of uh, that would be a group of Pi users, and the world, which is basically everybody who is not either the owner or in that group. And any one of those entities there, the owner of the group of the world, can be given a read-write access, or simply read access, or no access at all. So, you know, in our previous videos, we said that when RT Web Parts connects, we pass the Windows credentials, and then we get mapped to a particular Pi user. So what that Pi user can do or can't do, well, that will affect whether, for example, uh, in RT Web Parts, you'll be able to see the data that's associated with these things like these trends and these graphics. And also, through the module database, we control whether you can navigate to specific modules in the module database, like I'm doing right here. Now, in with regard to points, that is done in the point builder. If we take a look at a typical Pi point here and look at the security, as I said, that point, it's an object in Pi. It can be associated with an owner and a, that would be an individual user, and a group of Pi users. Now this, we're looking at the data owner section. This is referring to the data that's associated with that Pi tag. We also have separate security settings for the point attributes, like things like the zero and the span. But in any event, the, the owner and the group can be specified. Now, specifying the owner and the group doesn't really mean anything until you identify what permissions the owner, the group, and everybody else has, the world. So in this case, the owner has read-write access, the group has read access, and the world has read access. So in fact, if you were a member of the group called Pi Admin, then uh, that really wouldn't confer any special privileges on you here. By the way, I'm sorry for the, uh, the slight confusion here. There is a user called Pi Admin, and unfortunately we also created a group called Pi Admin. That can be very confusing. I wish we had called that Pi Administrators or something like that to make it obvious that we're talking about a group here, not an individual Pi user. But in any event, that's how we set up access to individual users. So the grand finale to our previous videos was we showed you how you can create uh, something that will map the Windows credentials to a Pi user, and now we're showing you how to assign what that Pi user can and can't do. Now I mentioned that modules also have the same capability. Uh, if you go into the module database, and for example I edit one of these modules, you can see that you can set this these same settings for modules as well. So you can make some modules available or not available to users. So again, to summarize, what we've done here is describe how you have access or how you get access to uh, specific points or specific objects within Pi. And that would affect, for example, whether you see values here or whether you just see a blank space where, where, with the notation no data. And what we haven't discussed yet is how do we grant access to some of the more administrative things within RT Web Parts. That's actually part of our next video. We're going to talk next about how we get access to things like data sets and, um, and the configuration elements that we store uh, for trends and tables and things like that. So those are things we typically would, would want to restrict. We may want to restrict to only certain power users.